Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and today we're featuring a ranked battle replay from No Zoop For You in the USS Atlanta. You may know the name. Zoop is a North American community contributor for World of Warships. Like me, he's a military veteran. Unlike me, Zoop never had the privilege of serving in the Navy, but hey, at least he was an Air Force. We do at least have that in common. You see, the Army and the Navy do have their differences, but we have always been united in our deep and abiding contempt for the Air Force. Anyway, Tier 7 ranked, and Zoop's team is starting with something of a handicap, and I'm not talking about the pink Jervis. For those of you who are perhaps new to World of Warships, if a player's name and icon turns pink, it means he's guilty of team damage. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's a deliberate team killer. You always have to give people the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. It could just be that he was maybe a little careless with his torpedoes. Somebody wasn't really paying attention, zigged when they should have zagged and sailed into friendly torpedoes. So, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt, and also give them a very wide berth, especially if they're behind you and they have torpedoes. No, that's not the handicap that I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is the fact that Zoop is fighting six against seven, because one of his players is AFK. The player in the Fiji, the Tier 7 British light cruiser, an excellent Tier 7 cruiser by the way, is quite simply not present, and the team are starting to get a little suspicious. At first they think that they're actually down two players, but one of the other guys is just taking his time loading in. The Fiji, however, is well and truly AFK. We don't know why. I mean, clearly he was present when he hit the battle button, but perhaps he had to go and answer the door. Assuming his front door was three blocks away. Whatever the reason, the team is down a ship. And in a regular battle with 12 players, being down one ship isn't great, but it's not that bad. But when you only have six ships on the team... Being down one ship, particularly when it's a Fiji, a very, very good ship, is a slightly more significant handicap. Yep, you can look at him as much as you like, Zoop. He's gone, and he ain't coming back. Meanwhile, the Jervis has moved up to contest Bravo. Zoop hanging around behind the island in case he can help defend the Jervis from here, given the Leon time to move past the enemy Nagato's been spotted. No sign of the rest of the enemy team as yet, although somebody is firing from the far side of the island all the way up there to the north, and they're shooting at the Leon. High explosive, probably one of the cruisers. Judging by the rate of fire, definitely one of the cruisers, although there seems to be some armor piercing mixed in there as well. And oh, yep, there we go. Scharnhorst, Algerie, and there's the Z39. And those guys have spotted the Jervis. The Jervis is now caught in a very nasty crossfire between the Algerie, the Scharnhorst, and the Z39. He's managed to get some torpedoes away, and he's popped his smoke, but he's still taking hits. So they can clearly still see him. And I think there are two reasons for that. First, he's going too fast to actually remain successfully hidden inside the smoke. And I think the reason he's going too fast, because we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt here, is because he's inside the hydro range of the Z39. Unfortunately for the Jervis, if you are being hydroed, you don't get unhydroed by closing the distance to the ship that's hydroing you, which is exactly what the Jervis is doing. It's possible that he's working on the assumption that if he doesn't kill the Z-39, he's going to die in this crossfire, and there's probably an element of truth to that, but there's just too much fire coming his way, and nowhere near enough fire going in the direction of the Z-39 for that to save him, so the Jervis is pretty much dead. Meanwhile, Zoop's torpedo warning alarm is going off. Those will be the torpedoes from the Z-39 smokescreen, but hang on a second. More torpedoes? Oh crap, actually not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Stopped about 20 metres short of the bows of the ship. So that was kind of close. On the bright side, the Jervis's smokescreen did allow Zoop to get some shots off against those guys in open water without being detected. Something that he wouldn't have been able to do without the smokescreen, obscuring the line of sight between him and the enemy ships until he'd made it to here, on the comfortable side of this island. Unfortunately, the loss of the Jervis in combination with a completely AFK Fiji means that the team are now effectively down to four ships against six. To make matters worse, the enemy team, well, the Nagato on the enemy team, has managed to solo cap Alpha completely uncontested, which means the enemy team 
are now a good 200 points ahead. On the other hand, it's good that at least the active members of the team are sticking together. All four of them are all here on this side of the island. And two of the battleships, the Sinop and the Leon, are preparing to breach the corner and start taking the fight to the enemy. Although they're going to need to watch out, because that Z-39 has been spotted again. And yep, there is torpedoes. You see, that's the thing about the German destroyers. The torpedoes individually don't pack the same kind of punch as torpedoes of other nations, but those destroyers have a much faster reload. I think the Sinop got away with only taking the one torpedo. He doesn't seem to have suffered that much damage, and he's managed to get the bows of the ship around the corner of the island, so he's not giving broadside. However, this is where things start to get, well, how can I put it? Downright bizarre. Look at the Colorado. He's steaming around that island, giving a flat broadside to everything. The Leon puts one salvo into him, but with the exception of Zoop and the Synops secondaries, and perhaps the Scharnhorst, just over the Zoop's right, nobody else is shooting at him. The Leon is sailing full speed around that corner. Don't forget, there are three other ships around that corner that all have torpedoes, the Z-39, the Algerie, and the Scharnhorst, and they're all in torpedo range. Look at the Leon. <laughs> There's some of the torpedoes, at least. Which, of course, is why he's now turned broadside on to the Colorado at point-blank range. Luckily, the Colorado is going down, thanks to the sustained fire of Zoop, as well as some assistance from the secondaries from the Sinop and the uh, Leon, but the Leon is dead. Now, here comes the Scharnhorst and the Algerie. Z-39 momentarily spotted in the background. The Sinop is dead. So, they've sank one Tier 7 battleship at the cost of two Tier 7 battleships, although the enemy Scharnhorst is on very low health and the friendly Scharnhorst has finished him off, which is now incredibly bad news for the Algerie. So it's not quite as bad as it first appeared, but they can't keep trading ship for ship like this. They started off two ships down. It's a simple mathematical equation. You're going to run out of ships before the enemy does if you keep trading one for one. Zoop, with the broadside of the Algerie to shoot at, momentarily switch to arm piercing. Back to the high explosive now. Let's not forget that the Algerie does have torpedo launchers on both sides and they have a 9 kilometer range. So he's almost certainly gotten torpedoes away, and they're probably aimed at the Scharnhorst. The Scharnhorst is down to less than half health as well, as this Algerie furiously starts kiting away. Yep, there's the torpedoes from one side. He's probably realised that he's dead, and he's trying to get the torpedoes away from the other side. But there's still a Z-39 out there somewhere. Okay, the Algerie is down. Keeping an eye open for torpedoes. Yep. I think we're seeing Algerie and Z-39 torpedoes. The Fiji is almost dead. What's going on? Well, the Nagato is busy farming damage and kills on him, which is actually a good thing, because as long as he's shooting at the Fiji, he's not shooting at anybody who matters. And the act of firing has also given his position away, so we can take steps to not be seen by the Nagato, as long as we know where he is. Now, where did the Z-39 go? I'm pretty sure he just launched one set of torpedoes. There were more torpedoes around here than could have been launched by the Algerie alone. And that is when Zoop gets hydroed. Well, hang on. If we're in hydro range of the Z-39, the Z-39 is definitely in radar range of the Atlanta. And yep, there he is. And Zoop was poised to obliterate the Z-39, but the enemy Fiji has just popped out of his smokescreen. And as long as Zoop has his Hydro running, the Z-39 isn't that much of a threat. The Fiji, on the other hand, very much is. And this is the second bizarre fight of the day. So the Fiji is shooting at him. Zoop's lost the turret, but that's entirely normal on the Atlanta. It's got plenty of them to spare. Then the Fiji stops shooting at him. Which means the Fiji is launching torpedoes. Zoop's Hydro is running. This is fine. Turns the guns to engage the Z-39. Kills the Z-39 with a second salvo. Meanwhile, the Fiji has just pulled a U-turn. Hydro's running, he can clearly see the Fiji's torpedoes. And while the Fiji is dumping a second set of torpedoes, he's not shooting at Zoop, and he's showing broadside, so praise the Lord and pass the armor-piercing ammunition. He uses the island as cover from the torpedoes that were never going to hit him. Dumps his own torpedoes into the water. Fiji is now bow tanking. Zoop still has the armor-piercing loaded, but, well, it doesn't really matter because it's not the guns that are going to kill the Fiji. 
everybody forgets that the Atlanta has torpedoes. They're not very good torpedoes, they only have a four and a half kilometer range, but it's got them. And, well, I hope that Fiji forgot that the Atlanta had torpedoes, because if he knew that the Atlanta was a torpedo armed cruiser and he still face planted into them, then let's be generous and say he forgot. So, that just leaves the Nagato. The Nagato, who solo capped A, and mistakenly assumed that six of his team would be entirely capable of dealing with four enemies. Now, you could argue that the Nagato was basically taking himself out of the fight by solo capping A while everybody else was fighting around Bravo. And there's some truth in that. But the Nagato didn't know that the entirety of Zoop's team, with the exception of the AFK Fiji that he was farming damage and kills on, was going to be fighting at Bravo. So the Nagato going alone for Alpha, when he could clearly see that the rest of his team were all heading mob-handed for Bravo, that was actually a fairly stupid thing for him to do, because he didn't know that he wasn't going to run into any opposition up there. Worst case scenario, the Nagato could have arrived at Alpha at the same time as the entirety of Zoop's team. And it wouldn't have even taken the entirety of Zoop's team to take care of one isolated battleship. The Jervis could have done it alone. Yeah, assuming, of course, that the Jervis was being captained by somebody who could think and breathe at the same time. I mean, if you're going to make the conscious decision right at the start of the match to head away from where the entirety of the rest of your team is going, you'd best be in something sneaky like a destroyer. Or one of the more stealthy cruisers. Something with a smokescreen, perhaps. Because you don't know what you're going to run into. And if you make that decision, you're either some kind of hipster you know, you're, you're not heading the same way as the rest of the team because you went to Bravo before it was cool. Or, and I'm just putting this out there, it's possible that maybe we're not dealing with the world's greatest Nagato player. I mean, it's a battleship. It is armed with 16-inch guns. They tend to over-penetrate a lot when they hit light cruisers like the Atlanta, however. Your secondaries are absolutely terrible. You have the range advantage over both of your opponents. Maybe it's not such a good idea to be closing to short range against opponents both of whom are on with torpedoes. Zoop, meanwhile, is going to tuck himself in behind this island because he can't really count on the Nagato over-penetrating any more than he already has. He doesn't have enough health left. And the Scharnhorst is playing a very dangerous game there. He's actually broadsiding the Nagato, and the Nagato is about to die because he's on fire, thanks to uh, Zoop working him over, but he was given a broadside to a battleship armed with 16-inch guns, but he managed to get himself turned around and angled before the Nagato could reload. And then something else happened before the Nagato could reload. Zoop claimed his next kill. Sadly, no post-battle results screen, but that was a 180,000 damage, 4 kill, almost 3,000 base experience, ranked battle for no Zoop for you in the USS Atlanta, a battle that he never should have won. And at several points it looked like he wasn't going to, until of course, he did. No Zoop for you. North American World of Warships community contributor. Link to his YouTube channel down below in the video description. I do highly recommend it. He's a bloody nice chap. Hope you guys enjoyed it. That's it for today. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.